Welcome, this is my latest video on the FL Sun Q5 3D printer. If you find this video helpful and you're looking to purchase one of these, I'll put a link below to this on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to my FL Sun Q5 playlist where I have my other videos on this printer. So in this video, I'm going to go over changing the focus on the time lapse when you're using OctoPrint. And I have a video on my playlist about setting up OctoPrint. I also have a video on changing the resolution of the time lapse camera. But one problem I've run into when I do time lapses is that the focus can change because the parts are moving. So what I want to do is fix the focus so it doesn't change. So in order to do this, we'll have to go into the terminal, but I'll walk you through it the best I can. But the steps should be similar on Windows or Linux. So the model I have here is a turtle. And it's, let's see if we could look at the height here. I'll select it. I'll go over to the left here, and the height is about 2 centimeters, and the width and depth are about 10 centimeters, give or take. So I have another 3D print I have that's about the same size that I'm going to place on the bed to do the calibration of it, and hopefully that'll give us a good value. So what I want to do is open up my terminal. Now if you're on Windows, you want to go to the command line, and on Linux, you want to open a terminal. And on Windows, you want to install the SSH client. So you can Google that, or if you have questions about it, let me know, and I can try and help you out. So I'll make this bigger here. So Octopi has SSH enabled by default, and what SSH is, it's a command line terminal. So what I can do is I can connect from my Mac to that Raspberry Pi computer that's running Octopi remotely. So to do that, I'll type SSH space PI at, and I'll type octopi.local. I'll hit enter. It will ask me for my password. Now you may have a message that comes up here and it says, do you want to accept this key? And you'll say yes. Um, but I've already done this, so that didn't come up. So now I'll type raspberry as the password. Okay, so we're logged in, clear my screen. So I want to have my browser open while I'm doing this. And you can zoom in on this. On my Mac, I hit Command Plus. I think it's Control Plus on Windows. But you can look that up. You can go to like your view menu and say zoom in. I find it easier to see if I zoom in. So I have some notes here also. And I'll put a link in the description of my website where I'll have these notes where you can copy and paste them. So I'm going to try and get everything on the screen at the same time. So out of curiosity, I want to see what the current focus is. So there's a command here I can run, and it's V4L2, and that V4L means Video for Linux, dash CTL. So this is Video for Linux Control. So the dash D stands for Device Zero, and then we say Get Control Focus Absolute. So I'll hit Enter here, and it tells us that the focus value is 85. So now I'm going to place a model in the middle of the bed. I'm going to kind of orient it like I think the turtle will show up here. And now if I run this again, it says the focus is the same. And that may be correct. But what I can do is I can turn autofocus off and on again, and we'll see if that value changes. So this is the command to turn it off. We have the V4L2 control. We say set control focus auto equals zero. And it wants my password this time, so I'll type raspberry. Now let's read this again. Well, it's going to be the same. Let's turn it back on. And to do that, I'm pressing the up arrow to go to the previous commands. So if you press the up and down arrows, that will go back through your history of the commands you've already typed in. So I just pressed up arrow until I had the command I wanted, and then I changed the zero to a one. I'll go up again until I have the get command, and it still says 85. So that didn't change. So let me set something in front of it that's bigger. So I'll read this value again. Now it says 170. So now if I turn the autofocus off, and we'll read that value as 170, I'll remove this box. And you can see our print is out of focus. So I'll turn autofocus back on. And now it's in focus. Let's see if it went back to 85. It did go back to 85. So when you have the print head moving around, it can change the focus while you're trying to print. So I want it to stay focused on the print itself. And if the print head is kind of out of focus every once in a while, a little bit blurry, that's fine. I think it'll look better that way, as opposed to it shifting the focus all the time. So I'm going to set the autofocus to zero now, and that will lock it in. So now I can remove my model and I'm ready to print. So what you can do when this is finished printing is that you can log into this interface and turn autofocus back on and then check the value you get by running the focus absolute and see if you get 85 or whatever you get on your printer. And that may give you a value that you want to use next time. So there is a command you can run to set the value to whatever you want. So we're at 85, but I can set it to 85 too. So I'm going to print this and then we'll check and see if the focus turned out okay in our time lapse. Okay, the print has finished, and I missed something when I was setting up the configuration, and I didn't notice it till I started watching the preview on here, and what I missed was the exposure. 
So I ran some different things. One was this exposure auto equals one, and this sets it to manual mode. So just like the focus, you can find out the exposure level. So I'll run that command here, and that's at 996, and you can also set that the same way. So now that this is completed, I'm curious to know if the focus would be different. So I'm going to go back up here and turn the autofocus on, and then we'll read the focus reading. And it still says 85, so we picked a good number. So I'll set that back to zero. So looking at my preview here, I probably could have moved the camera a little bit, so that would be more in the center of it, but I'm going to be happy with what I got. So if you find some values here that you like and you want to have them automatically be used every time, I'll clear my screen here. I'll type ls. We see we have this MJ streamer. You can go into that. And I'll type ls here. So I type cd MJ streamer to go into it. And then I can type nano space and then start.sh. I'll make this a little bigger here. I can scroll down. And I read this from an article that I'll link to below, and they actually did it improperly in the article because they put commands at the very top of this file. We actually want to go down here, probably after this um, comment here. This would be a good spot. And then I can go here and just paste in these lines. And I can also set this to whatever absolute values I want. I think I had 85. like so. And now I can type control O to save and control X to exit. So now if I restart the Raspberry Pi, it will automatically load those settings. So it's currently rendering the time lapse. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. So I'll jump ahead till that's finished and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, the time lapse is finished rendering. So I'm going to open up this older one I did. This is the octopus and I'll make this full screen. I'm actually going to take this actual video file and put it in my video editor so you're looking at the native version of it. So if you watch this one and you look at the print in the middle, you can see it kind of get lighter and darker as the exposure changes and the focus changes throughout the print. And it's because the camera is focusing on the print head itself and not the print. So it kind of pulses in and out and the coloring changes a lot. So now I'll go to my most recent one of the turtle and it's more consistent here. So you can see that the exposure is not changing, the focus isn't changing. So sometimes the print head is out of focus, but that's fine because mostly want to focus on the print itself. And there we go, it's all completed. I'll go back over to the octopus here. And again at the end, you can see this is just kind of washed out. It's overexposed. So this is a translucent filament, so it might be a little bit difficult to dial in. You'd probably want to take a previous print of the same filament and put it in the middle of the build plate and set all your settings with it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.